Once I've threaded my sewing machine, I unwound my bobbin and added it in. Now I need to practice on a practice piece. You can see this is a practice piece that's well loved. I've used it a couple of different times. The point of using practice piece is to make sure that if I've messed up somewhere, I can catch it before I actually sew on my final project. If I mess up here, I don't need to seam rip anything. But if I mess up on my project, I need to take out the seam ripper and make it look good. So we're going to practice on this. To actually start sewing for the first time, what you want to do is make sure your presser foot is up, lifted up and you can slide your fabric in. You do want to have tails, so that's okay if you have a, a tail of your both of your bobbin and your top thread. They just can go to the side and you'll just slide your fabric in between the two. Then you'll lower your presser foot, keep your hands away from the needle and find your foot pedal and go ahead and start. While you're practicing, what you're listening for is different sounds that don't sound normal. Often I hear a ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. If you hear a sound, stop. You want to open up your lid and check to make sure everything looks right. You can kind of peek to see if your bobbin looks good okay underneath there. Um, but it, oftentimes, if there's a problem while you're stitching, it's because of a problem of your thread. One of the biggest problems that we have is that with the take-up lever as it goes up and down like that, sometimes the thread loops off. So that's the number one spot I would check. Otherwise, if it looks good, you can sew until you get comfortable with it. But there is one more concept I want you to know, and that is back stitching, which is this right here. I often call it reverse stitching, so you might hear it either way. The idea of back stitching is taking our fabric and instead of pushing it forward through the machine or the machine pushes it forward through us, we're going to go the opposite way, our back. So to activate it, I'm going to kind of take a thumbnail and go underneath, like there's a little dot right there, double click twice and you'll see that this little um, insignia appears, it's just an upside down arrow, and watch the direction of the fabric now. Now it's coming towards me instead of away from me. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the fabric. It looks like that right here. So you can see it's doubled up and thicker. This is our way of tying off, right? We don't want to take our threads and tie it by hand every single time. But if you stitch over the last couple of stitches that you made, it should be secure. So I'm going to show you what it looks like if I was going to do my project. I put my fabric in. I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric. I know it's kind of frayed. Actually, I'll start over here make it easier. I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric with the edge of my presser foot, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch. When I backstitch, I backstitch three times. One, oops, i got to start forward. I'll go forward. One, two, three-ish. Backstitch, double click really fast. Oops. And then go back. One, two, three, four-ish, I guess. Take the backstitch off. I'm going to stitch all the way across my fabric. Again, choose a speed that works best for you. And I'm going to slow down towards the end. And I'm going to put my back stitch on. And back stitch three or four. One, two, three, four. Take it off. And then just take it off the end. When I'm done with my fabric, all I have to do is lift up my, my presser foot, slide it to the left so I've got tails. I can cut my tails off using the um, uh, knife back there, or I can use a pair of scissors. But now you should be able to see where I backstitched. I know it's kind of messy, but there's a backstitch and there's a backstitch. The rest of the middle is not backstitched and it doesn't need to be. So that's what I want you to practice next.